Hunter History, Episode 5, Settling In. In today's episode, we start off with Celeste waking up and looking around um, her the room she fell asleep in. Where? Right. I stay, I'm staying over at Del Delta's for the week. Uh, why did my parents... Why did mom have to... Why did dad have to choose this place? He said he helped me, but how is he going to help me? Hmm. Before Celeste can continue with her thoughts, she hears a knock on the on the door. Uh, hello? It's Delta. Oh, um, yeah? Get down here. Breakfast is getting cold. Uh, it, right. Coming! Celeste fidgetly gets out of bed and starts getting changed and heads... When she's done changed, she heads downstairs. Oh. Uh. Eat up. Oh, uh, thank you for the food. It's no issue. Delta and Celeste continue, um, begin to dig in. So, hmm? what exactly do your parents do that would cause them to leave on on such short notice? Oh, well, my dad doesn't really have a job. He more or less he more or less just um he just watches watches the house. My mother um is a, is the CEO of a uh, big online company. Yeah, it wasn't exactly short notice because of what of the events happening. More so that someone upstate um, messed something up. Huh. What's the company your mom runs? Um, I don't really know. She doesn't really talk much about her work life. She more or less keeps it to herself and dad. Sounds troublesome. Eh, that, that's one way to put it. I, I've always wanted to help my my mother out, but mm, she just doesn't let me. Dad, my dad takes side jobs here and there, but nothing that uh, concrete for a consistent career. Though that's what just how, what how mom wants it. Hmm. Um, do you mind if I ask a question? Go on. Uh, uh, actually, I probably would be better if I did it. We're gonna be here for a whole week. Might as well get acquainted with you. Might as well at least get somewhat acquainted with each other. Um... Well, I actually have two questions, if you don't mind me asking both. Go on. Um, you know the returning festival that's happening this Saturday, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm aware of that festival. The the, the festival that the school holds each year when, for every time the, when school's back on to help students get a, slowly get back into... A, a daily, a day-to-day -day life of um, of books, like, in a sense. It, yeah, I was wondering if you would um, want to go with me. Hmm. Mm. It's uh, no, I mean, I didn't Sunday didn't. showed up and I ended up having to fight him head on. She never exact she never, didn't exactly get to go on that day, even if she's here now. And she won't if she 
she wanted to say something about this, she could have easily have said so, and I would be in a prison cell, or at the very least a test subject. <sighs> you know, I got nothing better to do. Well, I mean, besides training, which I'm going to need to get on to today. Noble said bravery. I think I kind of got a bit too excited when I heard that. It could, I'm definitely more confident when it comes to it being bravery. But, um. All right. What's your uh, What's the second question you want to ask me? Oh. Um. If you don't mind, what exactly happened? Back in junior high, that. What's your relationship with Caroline, more or less? Oh. Uh, you don't. You don't have to. Add, I know this one's a little. No, 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 no. As much as I don't like talking about it, I think it'd be better if you didn't know. Okay. As you probably remember me mentioning. Caroline is, in a sense, my ex-girlfriend. Yeah, what did you two dated? One of the biggest mistakes. A, a, a mistake I would, I wish I would rather forget. But with you now technically being involved, and as much as I don't want you around to deal with further events, it's better because... She definitely has a grudge against you. I, well, the very least, she wants you dead because, in a sense, you know. She won't go after Noble because it just makes my predicament much worse, and she's not trying to do that. Which is why there weren't any cars driving by, nor any witnesses. I'm a, I assume you saw the news this um, yesterday morning, right? Yeah, I saw it before I headed out. I was quite surprised that, that no one actually saw you. Or us when we left the park. Let's just count it as us be getting lucky. Okay. It happened sometime four years ago. Almost, it's actually almost gonna be five years now. <laughs> it happened sometime in, into early November. I don't want to get into too much detail, but I'll. I'll give you a basic summary. Actually, let's head to the dojo. I, I'm gonna get. I need to. I want to start training as soon as possible. Um. Okay. Both Delta and Celeste finish up their breakfast and head out to the dojo. Celeste walks in as Delta closes the door behind them. Okay, now, okay, how do I exactly word this? Okay, so, four years ago, four years ago, coming around to... Okay. So, man, it's almost gonna be five years since all this happened. Oh, boy. Okay. More or less, about four years ago, soon reaching five, I was more or less sitting, eating breakfast with Noble. Um, hmm. It was just any normal day I could have it um, in junior high. Then, me and him were just chatting, and then, while well, she appeared in... Walking through um, the um, walking into the cafeteria, many people just assumed that she was a new student and just left her be. Noble being a uh, noble, and just a side note: if he told if he if you two were talking yesterday and how the fact that he isn't a pervert, he is, but he only really acts that way around his friends. Uh, noted. As I was uh, telling, she more or less pro. Well, no, before that, Noble was being Noble and more or less talking 
and saying that she will look attractive. At the time, at the time, I looked, I looked at her and yeah, she was attractive. Noble being, again, Noble was more or less telling, trying to get me to say what I thought about her. Because back then, Noble was very insistent on getting me in a relationship. I still don't know why, but I'm not going to question his actions. It's Noble. She approaches um, Art in the table I was sitting at with Noble. I didn't really talk to many people, so he was more or less the only friend I really had. But I did get along with everyone else. She approached us and more or less asked if one of us could show us around. Noble trying to be very insistent and trying to more or less um, trying to get me to leave a, a good first impression. Volunteered me to look around, saying I had nothing better to do. And of course, he um, he was right. I didn't really have anything to do, but I wasn't really in the mood. Noble still trying to insist. Car Caroline agrees. I just suck it up and tell her that I can show her around after school. Because it, um, classes were, were, going to be, were going to be starting soon. So I, um, I walked her to the principal's office and asked if it was okay to show her around after school. Principal approves and the tours on our, uh, has begun. I show her all the classrooms, all the hallways, and more, more or less so she can get acquainted with everything. I show her the, compu um, the computer room, the gymnasium, the theater area, the library, um, everything. Showed her where some of her classes are so she can get a little used to, a little used to it. And she thanks me. She hugged me, which was a bit sudden, but she seemed very assertive at the time. Then and there, I didn't really think anything of it because, well, she's a new student. There's nothing I could really say to turn her away because I didn't know her and she didn't know me. Or that's at least what I thought. Time goes by, Caroline's hanging out with me and Noble. Caroline asked me out. I was a little hesitant, but because we had the three of us had gotten a such good friendship, so I didn't want to ruin that friendship, but at the same time I didn't want to hurt her feelings. So I went on the date, and we had a blast. Um, months go by and we're already into March. Me and her have um, greatly increased our relationship to the point we're already um, to the point we're almost at each other's houses daily. Well, more so she's at my house. I never really got to see her house. I just thought she had overprotective parents and she didn't say anything about her having a boyfriend, so I never pressed. Well, did I know that? Um, no, that's later in the story. I take, um, back then I used to take side jobs, mowing lawns or babysitting. I wasn't that great with kids, so I'm more or less insistent on getting um, jobs for lawn mowing or car washing. I got uh, many, uh, jobs here and there, and one day, on a Saturday afternoon, I was called. My parent, my parents called, called me downstairs to inform me that someone wanted to get a uh, that I had an appointment for today. I had forgotten because I was spending the day with Car with Caroline. My parents told me that they were going to be heading out and they would want me to go, and they'll be leaving me the spare key. I more or less rushed to get changed because I really I was more or less just wearing shorts and if I remember correctly it was a car washing job so I needed some clothes I could get a, afford to get stained. 
or the very least wet. I did so, got changed, and left as soon as possible. I told Caroline if she could see herself out, she told me yes, and I was on my way. My brothers were... My brothers were, um, playing in the back outside, but by the time I left, my parents... I saw them head back inside before I, to make sure that they were safe. I head off, and I do my lawn mowing job. No, not lawn mowing job. Car washing, because, well, I think... It, it's been so long, I think I had to do both. Which, I got paid a fair amount, and I had to, I rode my bike back home. By the time I got home, I, I more or less thought that Caroline had left. I thought she was already on her way home, so... Once I approached the door, I saw that it was still open. It wasn't locked. I would have assumed that my brothers would have locked the door the moment they saw Caroline leave, so I panicked. I I got worried. I more or less ran upstairs and headed to our room. I heard when I was running upstairs, I heard Caroline's voice. But it was more sadistic and there was just a, a sense of fear coming from her voice, a sense of intimidation. When I walked into the room, I saw Caroline... Alright, it's okay, it's okay, you don't have to talk about... No. It's okay. <clears throat> it really isn't easy for me to talk about this, but you do deserve to know. Okay. As I was saying, I walked in and my brothers were lying there, completely bloodied and with multiple stab wounds. Caroline was holding a um, a jagged sword, one that I I didn't even see her bring in. There's no way I was thinking to myself, I was in a state of shock. I pushed Caroline off, and I grabbed my brothers, the stab wounds, they, my brothers were somehow still alive and I could immediately tell that she did this on purpose, I mean, of course she did it on purpose. I looked my brothers, both of them in the eyes and they were still alive. She had missed all their vital spots on purpose. Stab wounds going through their bodies. They were barely 10 years old when this happened. I rushed them out. I rushed them outside and got them onto the, a little carrier th I have for my bag for some tools and, maybe, and some brushes that I used for um, car washing. I emptied the little carrier and got them on it. I called 911 immediately, letting them know that for more or less a rendezvous spot in case I wasn't there in time to head to my address. My brothers, they were talking, they were still speaking, trying to get me to stop. I still don't know why they wanted me to stop. They were dying, they were bleeding out in, my, in front of my very eyes. They told me it would be okay, that what happened next wouldn't be my fault. It's like they knew what I was thinking, but I just couldn't say anything back. And before I could even say anything, I saw the color leave their s I saw the color leave them. I pressed my ear against both of them, and I could couldn't even hear a heartbeat. I was emotionless. Then and there, there was nothing coursing through my body. Everything just, I just went numb. But then Caroline stepped out. I turned my attention towards her and she just smiled at me with a devilish smile, 
laughing at the top of her lungs. At that very moment, I was filled with so much anger. I wanted her to suffer just as she made my brother suffer. I was gone for out for more than three hours. They should have died long ago. Caroline must have still been in the house. She must have rather hid or just not not shown herself. It's like she, she I could tell she waited for me by the way she was just looking at me. I wanted her dead more than anything else. When she laughed, I just. I was filled with so much rage. I more or less stood up and charged at her, and after that, everything had gone white. Gone black. I don't remember anything after I ran at her. I don't remember what happened until the next thing I know, I'm sleeping in a jail cell at the, at the police station. My parents informed me of what happened when the officers and ambulance showed up how they found me unconscious there was no trace of Caroline even being there I the officers didn't even know who she was when I told them to contact the school no, no te her teachers didn't even know either. My brothers were claimed to have been dead for more than three hours. That I couldn't have been possible. I showed up right as they died in my arms. I couldn't have been asleep for that long. I had called 911. The ambulances must have shown up in time. The officers... The officers told me I was free to go, that there was no nothing they could really do. I told I told more or less told them what happened, but they more or less said they more or less told me that I'm that someone must have messed with me, but even when I told them to contact Noble's family, they seemed to know who she was, but there was nothing that could go against it. Go more or less force them to do an investigation as no one could even remember. I was so livid and the next thing you know when I head home and I wake up the next day I'm on the news and the officers saying how I killed my brothers with no factual evidence whatsoever and them stating and them stating that they had no evidence but wouldn't but neighbor neighbors saying that it was me but with no actual visible evi visible wit evidence they just more or less allowed me to roam free as a normal citizen. I, I was in so much rage. I told my, I got my parents to try to get them to do something about this, but there was, they said their hands were tied. And the next thing you know, I'm living out the rest of my life as the, as it is now. Delta. I'm. I'm so sorry. <sighs> it's fine. What happened then doesn't reflect what, what's going to happen now. My brothers may have passed, but now I have actual the capabilities to actually avenge them. I don't know what's going to happen from here on out, but all, the one thing I do know is I am going to get stronger, and I am going to take Blitz, Caroline, and anyone else who, who supports Caroline, I'm, gonna, I'm going to take all of them down, I'm going to avenge my brothers, I don't care if I have to do it solo, she is going down. And if I have to get my hands a little bit bloody, then if it if it if, if it if it's anyone's if anyone is, is supporting her, they can expect their blood to get on my hands. Delta, you shouldn't. 
I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I know I'm, in a sense, talking crazy right now. But nothing, nothing is more important to me right now than taking Caroline down and avenging my brothers. Something big. This is just the start of something big that's that's going to happen, and that's going to be me taking her down, and the whole and the whole world, not just Citadel City, but the whole world, or at the very least, the whole country, knowing that I was wrongfully accused. Every citizen of Citadel City, anyone who at least blamed me and accused me, is going is going to face justice. Whether it be by my hands or by the stupid law system. One way or the other, big things are coming. And I can't wait. Well, I mean, if, if that's what it takes for you to do, then I'll support you however I can. But, mm. Delta turns away, turns away bashfully with a burning in his cheeks. <laughs> Thanks. And as, and as much as I would like to continue talking, I have training to get to. Right. Celeste leaves the dojo so Delta can train in peace. It's not... I really blush. No. This isn't the time for that. Right now, it's time to train. Hopefully, Noble Noble said it's right. I can at least try both alternatives. Hopefully, what one of them is correct. Celeste walks back in the house and can and walks back up into into the parent into the room. She slept last night. Mm. Oh, Delta. No, he seems so broken. No, no. It almost feels wrong to feel this way towards him. Maybe, maybe when it's all over. I'll say something. Yeah. Until the time comes, I'll keep my feelings in control. That... That just seems so... energetic, so confident when it came... When it, see, when it comes to talking about taking care of this girl and go down. He seems so confident about it. I'm sure he'll do it. And... Hopefully, things change for the better. As Celeste begins to slowly unpack her things for the week, we the question remains. Questions remain. More or less, what is Caroline after? And the returning festival, how will it, things play out for... Celeste, Delta, and Noble when the heck if they all decide to go to the returning festival. Will events replay? Will Delta be able to avenge his brothers if, once he gets control of his power? Questions that, are, that will be answered in the next few episodes of Hunter History. Next time on Hunter History, Delta and Celeste head to the returning festival. With people being cautious of Delta, things more or less play out normally. Delta and Celeste enjoying their time together and Noble showing up later on to greet the two. With them enjoying things, a familiar face shows himself to confront Delta, Celeste, and Noble. With the stare down commencing, things slowly turn for the worse. Next time 
on Hunter History. Returning festival. <laughs>